My name is Hanif Rahbari. I'm an assistant professor at uh, uh, RIT and ESL Global Cybersecurity Institute at Rochester, New York. Uh, this is a work that I did with my PhD student, Noreen, who uh, did the most of the work, uh, but because of US visa issues, she could not uh, join us uh, in this YSEC. What I'm going to talk about is circumventing the defense against modulation classification attacks. So the, the, the talk is mostly focused on digital modulation. And as you know, in modern communication system, digital modulation is a key component. Uh, that's essentially the process of uh, mapping digital bits onto uh, the, uh, analog si symbols. And then this, uh, 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 for, this, uh, for digital modulation, the number of bits that are going to be mapped per si to the symbol depends on the channel quality or um, uh, 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 channel capacity. And then uh, the modulation scheme that is used based on the number of uh, bits is also called mo modulation scheme or modulation order. So for example, if you consider the uh, QAM modulation schemes uh, as, uh, uh, and these four uh, uh, types of QAM modulation schemes, uh, as SINR increases, the transmitter can transmit more bits per symbol. So in the case of BPSK, it can transmit one bit per sim symbol, in the case of QPSK, it can transmit two bits per symbol. In the case of 16 QAM, it can transmit four bits per symbol. And in the case of 64 QAM, you guess it, it can transmit six bits per symbol. So there's a correlation between the modulation scheme and the number of bits per symbol. Um, so then usually a transmitter notifies the receiver of what modulation scheme it uses so that the receiver can use that to start to, to, demo, to demodulate the bits. However, uh, in certain cases, spe specifically when uh, we have a blind receiver, the receiver needs to classify that modulation scheme. What's a blind receiver? A blind receiver is, is, is a receiver that doesn't know the, uh, the system that is transmitting, uh, or the transmitter does not have any uh, header field to indicate what the modulation scheme it uses, or the transmitter does have a header field for modulation scheme, but that header field is either encrypted or is non-decodable for, for various reasons. And for that reason, uh, the receiver needs to first identify what is the modulation scheme that transmitter uses in its signal before it can start to, de to demodulate or do other purposes. And this has a wide set of applications you know, in military and, and civilian uh, cases. For example, in, in electronic war warfare, um, um, the system wants to identify and perhaps jam the signals of, of the enemies, uh, uh, their radars, their IEDs, their UAVs, and so on and so forth. So uh, the, 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 uh, the modulation classification is used for, for identifying such signals. In the spectrum surveillance and enforcement uh, in emerging uh, spectrum shading schemes, uh, 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 the, 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 the observers or the monitors need to identify the modulation schemes. In situational awareness uh, uh, problems or, or applications and interference detection, especially in satellite communication, again, the trans, uh, a satellite or receiver needs to identify the modulation scheme of the transmitter. Uh, and as uh, uh, mentioned in one of the talks earlier in this YSEC, you know, even for cellular data sniffing tools, open source tools for sniffing data, uh, uh, cellular data, uh, like the LTS sniffer proposed, uh, pre presented in this conference, the receiver needs to uh, uh, classify the modulation scheme because the header field is encrypted. Um, so how basically modulation classification works? So typically, a, uh, the receiver uses a, 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 a statistical machine learning approach uh, or clustering on the modulation uh, or the constellation map to basically uh, uh, figure out how many symbols that modulation scheme has. Uh, so it gets the received signal, it, uh, uh, it converts that to a series of symbols in, uh, with IQ values, and then typically uses a series of uh, 200, 128 symbols, rarely 500 tool symbols, and, and they achieve a higher score. And can, as you can see in this example, if there are two classes of BPSK and QPSK, and the receiver receives uh, the, the constellation map uh, to the left, or to your right, uh, then it can you know, apply one of these techniques and uh, quite easily identify the modulation scheme. So modulation classification can then also be used by attackers. And here the attackers um, can, uh, can basically reverse the purpose of the modulation classification. And basically uh, all the attacks or all the, all the applications I mentioned earlier can also be used for, by an attacker, but for illegitimate users. So for example, you know, signal identification can be used for, uh, for jamming legitimate transmissions. Um, um, 
a, a very good example of it is a selective jamming attack uh, that can identify the, trans, uh, the modulation scheme of the transmitter and de accordingly decides whether or not to jam uh, that signal. Uh, uh, prior work has shown that that uh, attack can even uh, drop the, the, the data rate from 54 uh, megabit per second to just one megabit per second. Um, in addition to uh, those, uh, uh, I would say, uh, adversary applications, uh, the adversaries can, uh, can also use uh, 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 modulation classification to, to launch wireless traffic analysis attacks, often privacy attacks, by learning uh, what is the modulation scheme, and once they know what is the modulation scheme, they can know what is the data rate of that transmission, and that they feed that data rate into some classifier for doing some other subsequent traffic analysis attacks. So, because of these uh, these attacks, uh, uh, prior work have uh, 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 tried to uh, defend against these attacks and propose modulation obfuscation techniques. Basically, the modulation obfuscation is an, is an attempt to prevent an adversary from successfully classifying a modulation scheme of a system. In other words, trying to really hide the modulation scheme of that system. Uh, so the purpose is to conceal the true order of the modulation system or modulation scheme uh, by basically mapping that to the highest order modulation scheme. You can think of it as a sort of equivalent to padding uh, when you want to hide the, uh, the size of a packet. But here, because it's in a wireless communication, this uh, concealment should also account for the loss of the communication quality because as you want to use the higher order modulation scheme, like you know, you want to use, let's say, Q, uh, QPSK, but instead you send 64 QAM, or you want to use 16 QAM, and instead send 64 QAM, you expect to lose uh, 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 transmission quality because you are not increasing the power or you are not increasing channel capacity, but you are using the higher order modulation scheme. Uh, and so the modulation obfuscation techniques also try to use try to use uh, some coded modulation techniques to uh, basically maintain the communication quality. And as using uh, uh, coded modulation would introduce uh, some dependencies among these symbols, these techniques further use uh, a shared secret, I call it J, and that shared secret is used to further disguise or hide the correlation between coded symbols. So uh, what basically uh, uh, happens in modulation obfuscation, uh, I explain in, 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 in this uh, example, suppose that you want to obfuscate BPSK to 16 QAM, uh, BPSK to the left, and then I want to map the 16 uh, BPSK symbols to 16 QAM constellation map. Uh, so the techniques first create, a, a, create a, set, a, a set of disjoint sets. I call them UJ, and J is that a secret number. And in this case, each set contains two symbols. UJ0 and UJ1, corresponding to two bits of the B BPSK. And then uh, the technique uses the trellis coded modulation, uh, basically to, uh, to create uh, some dependency among the symbols and to maintain the, uh, the, uh, the communication quality. Uh, depending on, on the counter state, whether it is zero or one, it, it uh, uses either uh, UJ or UJ plus one. So for example, when it, if it is in state zero and the input bit is one, you can guess it that it can, uh, it will uh, uh, look at the right hand side of the constellation map. Those are the uh, symbols corresponding to a bit one. And then because uh, um, uh, for, the, for that given J, it then looks at you know, UJI on, on that uh, constellation, constellation map and, and transmits uh, that symbol instead of the uh, BPSK symbol equivalent uh, uh, for, for one. And so uh, the, the input symbol also, because it's a TCM or trellis coded modulation, it also specifies the next uh, state. Like, you know, because, you know, it was the input bit was zero, one, it transi transitions to a state one. And, and these techniques, the obfuscation techniques, uh, then hide this correlation by varying that random secret J. So from symbol to symbol, so that the attacker cannot associate a, a received symbol uh, with the previous one, and then therefore you know, can uh, then discern what is the actual modulation order. So uh, the research question we tried to answer uh, was as follows. So is it possible to classify the underlying modulation order of, a, of an, of an of obfuscated signal without breaking the secret key? Uh, so meaning that the receiver gets, uh, or an attacker gets a, a modulation scheme or you know, signal but with 64 QAM, and it tries to figure out which one of these four modulation schemes were the actual or the true modulation scheme used in that uh, signal. 
So we look at this, uh, assume these four modulation types, in BPSK, QPSK, 16 QAM, and 64 QAM. And then the idea that we had is, uh, let's say, we, let's see whether we can study like the, the sequence of symbols. Prior work has shown that there is no uh, statistical correlation between the successive symbols, so that cannot be used. Also, uh, machine learning cannot, machine, uh, statistical machine learning cannot be used uh, uh, for, for similar reasons to break the system. So our intuition was that, you know, uh, uh, given that different, uh, uh, depending on your true modulation order, you might end up having different set of different subsets, different subset sizes, depending on what uh, a trellis coded modulation you use might have different transitions, different amount, number of transitions and different number of states. And so there should be some uh, uh, distinct features uh, between uh, these different cases that can potentially leak the actual modulation scheme. And so for this, we assume that a, a white box model, the attacker knows everything about the, uh, the scheme and technique, and then we conduct some study. So basically, we uh, 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 briefly our, our contribution, we, we are the first to basically empirically break the modulation obfuscation. Uh, using a low uh, complexity uh, uh, learning algorithm, deep learning algorithm, uh, which also achieves high accuracy in uh, over the air or USRP experiments. Uh, our uh, uh, technique uh, is also effective when the transmitter tries to uh, switch on and off be between using modulation obfuscation or not using modulation obfuscation just to, uh, to confuse the receiver. Our uh, scheme also uh, uh, is uh, effective against that. We also uh, uh, publicly released our code uh, uh, of the modulation of facilitated symbols. Uh, we realized that there is no publicly available code for, for the community to study a modulation of facilitation uh, uh, schemes. So we also released, you know, can uh, uh, scan the QR code and access the, the code. So very briefly about uh, our scheme. Uh, we, uh, as I said, you know, we wanted to study whether or not if studying a, a, long, a long sequence of symbols can reveal any, any data. And so when you deal with long uh, sequences of symbols, you typically use you know, one of the uh, CNN models or LSTM models to study these this, uh, uh, long symbols. Uh, and we designed this uh, uh, basically uh, uh, CNN classifier that in the first layer you can also replace it with LSTM. It turns out that uh, uh, when we look at long se sequence of symbols, 6,000 samples, for example, each with you know, uh, 500 symbols. CNN outperforms uh, LSTM with significant margin, and our CNN model is, is very lightweight. It's, the complexity is just O of KL. Uh, K is, is the number of uh, one-dimensional filters, and L is the, the, length, uh, the length of the input uh, uh, sequence. Uh, and you can see huge uh, difference between uh, not only the, in terms of the accuracy, but also in terms of the training cost. Uh, then we evaluated, we basically look at, you know, uh, sequences of 2,000 symbols. We can compare that to uh, 128 in typical modulation classification. Uh, we, knew, we, know that, we knew that it's not going to work, so we had look at uh, sequences of longer than 2,000 symbols. And uh, as you can see, we, we, we achieve really high, accura uh, high uh, accuracy scores. Uh, and, you know, uh, looking at the uh, confusion metrics, we get a very good performance. Uh, almost across the board, uh, perhaps with the exception of BPSK, which we achieved 98% uh, 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 here in, t in terms of the, uh, the confusion, and because BPSK requires even longer sequences to be uh, correctly classified. Uh, we all, all studied on the different SNR levels. Uh, you can see that even at very low SNR levels, at, at zero dB, we still achieve a decent accuracy and F1 score, uh, 85%. And then we confirm these results uh, in our uh, USRP experiments. So a couple of key takeaways. Uh, so it is possible to break uh, modulation obfuscation. We show this in this work. But uh, given that the attack, what only when the attacker has enough time to study the system and train the system and prepare for the attack. Uh, also, the attack fails uh, if the frame size is less than 128 or up to uh, 500 symbols. So, I mean, uh, the, the attacker, the, the system might want to uh, take into that into account to uh, prevent against these attacks. Um, and, uh, and the defense must be cost effective and should not be static so that uh, the attacker doesn't have enough time to really learn about the system. Thank you for listening to my talk. Uh, okay, my name is Hanif, and I'm happy to answer your questions. <laughs>
Okay, now we have time for questions. Um, yeah, thanks for a really interesting talk. Um, I was just wondering, with this modulation obfuscation, do you know what the effect of doing that is on the robustness against noise? Because the main reason to use a constellation like BPSK is so that it's far more robust against um, like background Gaussian noise. Um, Absolutely. Yes. So, I mean, uh, uh, that's why uh, we say that, you know, any, uh, the, the, the modulation obfuscation techniques have to maintain the communication quality because you, your, your channel capacity says that you have to use up to uh, QPSK, but then you are sending your bits as if it's 64 qualm, mm -hmm. and when, it, when it, there is noise or uh, interference, you, we know as a fact that there are going to be more errors. Yeah. And because of that, you know, these techniques actually use uh, 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 coded modulation. So they correlate symbols, let's say 64 quant symbols, so that the receiver can apply, for example, a Viterbi decoder or other decoders to, to look at the dependencies among the symbols and taking advantage of that dependency or that you know, coding, it can recover the additional error due to using 64 qualm. Mm -hmm. Okay. But that from a security perspective, that creates, a, 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 it could create a, a space for the attacker to learn this dependency and actually based on that, it can guess what is the actual modulation order. And for that reason, this takes further use, further you know, uh, uh, randomize, uh, if I go back here, they randomize basically uh, uh, how this mapping is done to basically hide that uh, correlation. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, nice. Yeah, um, I guess this is a bit of a follow-up question um, because when you increase the constellation, that is kind of degrading the bandwidth of the channel. And um, I was wondering if there are any kind of practical systems that have like this bandwidth to spare that you can yeah. use this defense. So that's a good question, and, and actually the answer is that it doesn't require ex, uh, bandwidth expansion. So if you look from the th information theory perspective, both the transmitter and receiver know that shared secret. That shared secret is part of this, uh, uh, this mapping. So it's known by the receiver, it's known by the transmitter. What is unknown is just the, let's say, QPSK bits, if you are mapping QPSK to 64 qualm. And, and the system, I mean, the modulation obfuscation techniques is designed in a way that the amount of unknown for the receiver is still the same as the number of uh, unknown bits in the original QPSK. And for that reason, it doesn't require additional bandwidth. It doesn't require to increase the channel capacity, either by increasing transit power or by increasing uh, the, uh, the bandwidth. Can I ask a follow-up question on that? So if you pick just four, like one in each quadrant of your 64, or, or whatever, um, when you compensate for all of the channel noise at the receiver, it will look like four different points, each with a noise cluster around it. So if you were to plot it, how would it look different having obfuscated from not obfuscated? So if you're asking from the receiver's perspective, legitimate receiver perspective, it then it just looks like, you know, having a little bit of, of uh, I mean, uh, displacement of the constellation map uh, with perhaps a little bit denser or I would say a scaled down version of the, the same constellation map from the receiver, legitimate receiver. So that's, that's the role of that shared secret. However, from the attacker's perspective, who does not have that shared secret, it just looks at 64 qualm. Thanks. Thank you. More questions? I do have one question. Please. So you mentioned for defense or countermeasure, so it should be some method which should not be static so that attackers should not be able to learn. So do you have any thoughts on like the method which is not static, kind of dynamic, and what kind of thoughts you would like, like to share in order to have this kind of countermeasure? Uh, you're asking about the, uh, the follow-up paper that we're working on. <laughs> yes, definitely. So uh, we, we think that, you know, techniques like, you know, uh, there should be some, uh, um, randomness in the technique itself, not using some random bits, but perhaps changing the, um, the design a little bit, changing the, some of the models, changing some of the mappings. Um, uh, ideas similar to moving target defense hmm. is basically what uh, I guess we are leading to. And this 
short paper showed us some insight of you know how we have to adjust and the parameters for having such a moving target defense. Yeah, that looks like very interesting uh, direction for research. Thank you so much. Let's Thank you very much. Sticker.